Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to break down the recently released gameplay trailer for Ubisoft's upcoming Far Cry 6, and see how it compares both technically and from a gameplay perspective to the previous mainline entry to the series, Far Cry 5. For reference, Far Cry 5 is being played on the PC, with the settings cranked up as high as possible and motion blur disabled. However, it's important to note that because we're looking at an early rendered trailer for the game that Ubisoft released online, the footage of Far Cry 6 will not look quite as sharp. So while I will be going over some of the visual changes, I want to focus more so on the general design elements and some of the cool new gameplay features that you might have missed. Also, if I happen to miss something, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first going over the setting in each game. For those of you that haven't played Far Cry 5 yet, its story takes place in the fictional Hope County, a vast rural countryside in North America occupied by a cultist paramilitary. Hope County is composed primarily of thick forested regions, flat farmland, and winding rivers, and the wildlife players will encounter range from farm animals to bears, mountain lions, snakes, and deer. It's a gorgeously detailed world, with some great object models, high quality texture work, and a beautiful lighting design. Though, as I've noted several times in the past, it was still a bit of a step back in some cases. The time of day, for example, can't be changed manually by sleeping, limiting the player's ability to customize their attack on enemy strongholds, and dynamic weather effects like rain and snow were not featured. The map essentially only looks good at first glance, but the depth and complexity that help make past Far Cry worlds feel so real is severely lacking, keeping it from living up to its potential. The player assumes the role of a junior deputy for the Hope County Sheriff's Department, who, unlike most protagonists in the Far Cry universe, is completely silent and fully customizable, allowing players to theoretically insert themselves into the story. The main goal of the game is to take down the extremist cult that has occupied the region, using guerrilla tactics and as much firepower as possible. The format is slightly different from early Far Cry games, as it allows players to choose which region of the map that they want to tackle first. Though, as I noted in my review years ago, it does cause the game to feel a bit more formulaic as a result, and the narrative itself suffers from some repetitive story elements that hurt the flow of the experience. Far Cry 6, on the other hand, aims to correct a lot of these issues. While I feel Hope County was a great location on its own, the American Northwest does have its limitations in terms of variety. In Far Cry 6, however, the series is returning to yet another tropical locale, this time the fictional Caribbean island of Yara, that is very clearly inspired by the likes of Cuba. For what has been shown so far, Yara will no doubt be one of the most ambitious Far Cry environments we've seen to date with lush rainforests and jungles mixed in with more urban environments like towns and full modern cities. From these few wide angles shown off so far, it's a massive world, with a few island chains and long stretches of jungle, no doubt home to plenty of hostile wildlife. These locations look to be gorgeously detailed as well, with a huge bump to the amount of vegetation density and the return of dynamic weather effects as well rainstorms regularly coming and going, resulting in lots of muddy roadways and puddles that accumulate around the environment. Throughout the course of their journey, players assume the role of Danny Rojas, an ex-soldier swept up in the escalating revolution against the tyrannical El Presidente Anton Castillo. It's a familiar conflict that we've seen time and time again in the Far Cry series, but Ubisoft seems to be handling this particular story in a much more cinematic fashion. Cutscenes, for example, will return to having a fully voiced lead protagonist, with both a male and female actor reciting the same lines depending on how the player customizes their character at the start. But what's even more intriguing here is that for the first time, Far Cry 6 will feature a third-person perspective for the lead protagonist during these cutscenes. The series has long avoided this, trying to derive emotion at key points in the narrative from the lead character's voice alone, along with some overly dramatic hand motions. So, while it is a departure from what the series has done in the past, it seems as though Ubisoft felt this was the best way to tell their story properly, and it'll be interesting to see if this delivers a more meaningful narrative as a result. From the promotional material so far, Ubisoft Toronto also seems to be leaning heavily into its guerrilla warfare theme, which, for fans of the series, may not necessarily seem like a new concept for Far Cry. Each game in the Far Cry series has been shaped around guerrilla warfare, and ever since Far Cry 2, there's always been some sort of ruthless, unstable antagonist occupying the region and instigating a conflict with their militants and the local rebellion. But there is one key difference this time. El Presidente isn't a new occupying force, and has been in control for decades, 
shifting the balance strongly in his favor. So, instead of old farmhouses and gas stations serving as outposts like in Far Cry 5, El Presidente's forces have full control of pretty much everything, and regularly patrol the local towns with large military convoys, usually accompanied by heavily armored tanks, making guerrilla warfare more of a necessity than ever before. There's even new mechanics built into the game to allow for social stealth, like hiding weapons, bribing officers, and causing distractions to slip by unnoticed. But it wouldn't be Far Cry without plenty of gunplay, and with the help of some local black market dealers, players will have more than enough firepower to compete against Anton's military might. As always, players will have access to a large assortment of firearms to choose between. From what's been shown so far, the arsenal will consist mostly of old World War and Cold War era firearms, including the Makarov 9mm, the PPSH, the MP34, SKS, the M16A1, and the RPD. But there's a few more modern weapons mixed in as well, like this pump KSG shotgun. From these few short clips available in the trailer, we can already observe a solid improvement to the level of detail with similar weapons in Far Cry 5. The M16, for example, has a more battle-hardened look to it in Far Cry 6. And if you look carefully here, you'll see a small grenade charm attached to the top rail, hinting that we'll be able to customize the weapons with accessories this time around. Far Cry 5 already had some great weapon customization, but from what's been shown so far, Far Cry 6 will be expanding upon this aspect even further. Take a close look at this SKS here. Its default variant looks about how you'd expect, with a wooden stock assembly and no rails for attachments. But as the player progresses, they'll be able to further improve this weapon's functionality, and add on custom scopes, laser sights, cosmetics, and what looks like a makeshift suppressor. We can get an even better glimpse of these makeshift attachments with this AKM that seems to be using an old busted flip cell phone and a laser pointer as a substitute for a red dot sight. There's even some new makeshift weapons mixed in as well, like a minigun made out of old motorcycle parts, a high-powered nail gun, what looks to be a sort of laser rifle, and a high-velocity CD launcher, similar to the saw launcher from Far Cry New Dawn. One of the biggest features incorporated into Far Cry 6's combat mechanics, though, is the inclusion of the new Supremo backpacks. There's at least four backpacks to choose from, each with their own special ability that will likely be tied to some sort of cooldown to help balance out their powerful functions. The first option is a flamethrower. This is a pretty typical weapon for a Far Cry game, but by making the flamethrower separate from the main arsenal, it'll likely see a lot more use throughout the course of the experience. Next, there's the artillery launcher backpack, that can fire a barrage of rockets in front of the player to carpet bomb large groups of enemies. From the shots shown, it seems as though a third person camera is involved again, though it's still unclear exactly how this tool will work in action, and whether or not you can aim this with some sort of HUD element. The next backpack, and one that's pretty easy to miss, looks to be like some sort of electrical based weapon, made evident by the tightly wound copper wiring along the backpack itself. My guess is that this weapon will be able to chain together kills within short range, though we'll just have to wait to see more about this one. Finally, there's the jetpack. Again, it's not exactly clear how this one works yet, so it could either be a single boost for a large jump, or it could offer a bit more aerial control. But either way, this device will likely be incorporated to add more verticality to the combat. Collectively, these four Supremo backpacks should add a much needed twist to the tired Far Cry formula, and it'll be interesting to see how players customize their arsenal to account for this increased firepower. But the customization doesn't stop there. Players will also be able to fully customize their vehicles this time around, with some wild Mad Max style weapon upgrades that border on the ridiculous. There was vehicle customization in Far Cry 5 as well but it was severely limited, only allowing you to change the coloration and add on a dashboard bobblehead. But now, players will be able to attach browning machine guns, cow catchers, and turbo boosts, which should make short work of any patrol vehicles in the player's way. Players will also be able to commandeer actual tanks for the first time in a Far Cry game, that can be both driven and fired simultaneously without the need of a crew. Along with returning vehicles like pilotable boats and aircraft, players will also be able to ride horses for the first time, that look like they can be customized and interacted with, and possibly even ridden with a new third-person camera perspective. Though again, it's unclear if the latter is an actual feature, or just done for the sake of the trailer itself. Next up, we have Companions. In Far Cry 5, the series introduced Guns for Hire, a feature that allows players to recruit NPCs to follow them around and assist in combat. While there were several great choices for NPCs like long-range snipers, and a pilot that could be used to call in airstrikes, 
the three animal sidekicks, Boomer, Peaches, and Cheeseburger, unsurprisingly became the fan favorites. And to follow this up, Ubisoft is introducing at least two new animal sidekicks to Far Cry 6, including Chorizo, a dachshund puppy in a wheelchair, and Guapo, a pet crocodile that can attack enemies viciously after hearing a whistle. There does seem to be a third animal sidekick as well, a white panther named Champagne. However, it hasn't been shown in any trailer yet, and seems to be locked behind a premium content pack. That being said, I do feel like this is just a cosmetic content pack, and Champagne will be featured in the game still with a different fur color. Other features that I feel are worth mentioning include the return of unique healing animations, like this sequence where the player smokes a cigar and then uses it to cauterize a wound. Also, there's new open-world minigames like dominoes and possibly betting on cockfights, and an extension to the treasure hunting side missions, where you snap pictures with your cell phone for clues and then search for valuable gear hidden out in the jungles. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with what Ubisoft has revealed so far. The Far Cry series has long been one of my favorite shooter game franchises, and seeing it return to its tropical setting is certainly a good sign. But more importantly, all the features shown off seem like they're genuinely trying to improve on the formula and address common concerns. Far Cry 5's silent protagonist was not a popular decision, so we'll be getting a fully voiced protagonist again, and one that will likely be explored on an emotional level more than we've ever seen in the series before. The gameplay loop is also being tweaked to avoid retreading the same ground. This isn't going to just be more tower climbing and outpost raiding. There'll no doubt be some of that mixed in, but there seems to be more layers to it all now like a huge increase to the player's arsenal, and a lot more enemy variety to keep the combat challenging. It's a very ambitious entry to the series for sure, and I'm looking forward to exploring more of Far Cry 6 ahead of its release in October later this year. But what do you guys think? What do you like about Far Cry 6? And what would you like to see changed or added in? Let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this post